Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. I'm Linda McKissick. And I'm Dana Gentry. Hey, Dana, how are you? I'm good. How is Branson going? Branson is going great. We are just making things happen. Uh, my assistant has followed me. You saw her this week earlier at the Leadership Academy. She has come from Texas to Ohio to Missouri with us. So I told her she has to make a, uh, a page about what has she learned from spending a week with the McKissicks. And so that's going to be one of our podcast episodes is what Sarah has learned from being with us all week. And Sarah I'm almost and scared to chat. She's I was, huh? was going to say, Sarah and I need to chat. I'll never forget the first time I did that. The biggest thing I learned was uh, don't let you out of my sight because you all will take off and you're gone. <laughs> yeah, you better hang on or get a rope or something. So super excited today. Why don't you introduce our guests and uh, let's get started. Yes, yeah, super excited to have Sandra Candler on today. Sandra's been a friend of mine for a long time. You guys were recently on a panel together. Uh, she's been a leader inside of Keller Williams for, I don't know, Sandra, I'll let you tell how many years. Um, but she has personally impacted uh, one of the key people in my life. Um, and Sandra coached her for many years. And Sandra, I do have a question to ask you about Nancy, too, while we're on here. But welcome, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Yes, um, I've admired and had an opportunity to have a relationship with Dana for a lot of years, and I'm super grateful for that. And the leader, just who you are, Dana, I've always admired that. And then, obviously, Linda, I mean, you are an icon, <laughs> and I'm just super honored to be invited to be on the podcast for the first time. It's been a dream of mine to either be on one or have one. And I actually started asking Dana questions about that um, a while ago and then didn't follow up because I got busy. I'm sure that never happens to anyone else here. Um, <laughs> and uh, had the amazing opportunity to interview a panel on wealth that included Linda, of course, because of the um, doors and the profit share and the life impact that you've had. And just happened to say it right on the right there on the interview that I would like to be on the podcast and here we are so I'm grateful for that awesome there for what you asked for right <laughs> yes awesome so tell us a little bit you were I always like to say cliff note version but you were born and then what happened how'd you wind up here tell us your journey yes yeah, so I was born and in Rock Hill South Carolina just south of Charlotte <laughs> and uh, I was born to an amazing mama and um, an amazing dad who happened to navigate some tough things in his life that caused him to handle some things differently than maybe others of us would choose to as a parent. And my mom was amazing. We would walk to church, and uh, even when we didn't have a car, she worked four jobs <laughs> and still made time to read books to us at night, <laughs> which is so awesome. Um, and... She taught us that as long as we have each other and as long as we know that God is the most important thing, that we could do anything we set our minds to. Um, and she told me that I'm the one of the most stubborn people she's ever met, and she wishes she had more of that in her. <laughs> uh, so I really appreciate the mom I have. She's amazing. Uh, I have three sisters, um, also a half-sister and a stepbrother that we don't call each other that, but total of five siblings. I am the oldest. And... Um, I just have an amazing family and uh, grew up, moved around a little bit, graduated from a high school where there was basically nothing in the area, just trees, and now it is one of the fastest growing areas in Charlotte. It's Indian land, <laughs> and it's just south of Valentine, and um, studied accounting in school. I worked full-time, uh, found out I was having my oldest child when I walked the stage of high school at 18 years old. Um, and wow. went to college in person for the first two years and then online for college after that. Um, and, you know, just followed suit with what my mom taught me, okay. that hard work is the way to get things done. And um, after that, I studied numbers because they were easy, not because I like to sit behind a lot of detail. I actually don't. I'm just good at it. Um, and I love people. And... Um, 
you know, it was a little bit later in my adulthood when I realized that I didn't value myself, and I've had different people talk to me about this in different ways. I didn't value myself as much as I value others, which sounds mm. like a good idea. <laughs> like, oh, that's so virtuous. And in reality, the more that people have shared with me and helped me connect with different things about my journey, um, it, it means that you can overlook the things that need to be happening or you can um, not see areas that need improvement in your relationships with others. And I'm just super grateful for all of the leaders in Keller Williams since I joined in 2013 um, who poured into me and helped develop me and exposed me to amazing conversations. And I believe these skills and the mindset um, conversations can be applied to any business for anybody, anywhere, and it can totally change your life. Because if you would have talked to me in 2010, 2011, my life was in the toilet because of choices I was making. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then this is how amazing God works, right? So um, six months before I interviewed with Keller Williams, I rededicated my life to Christ. Um, my baby boy, who's now about to be... 10 in September, I can't even handle that, <laughs> but um, he is the reason I rededicated my life to Christ, and then six months later, I walked in the door of a Keller Williams, uh, we only had 98 agents at the time, they were doing a chili cook-off, and they said, sorry, we're so busy, it's God, family, then business here, so we do a lot of these fellowship things, and in that moment, I knew I was going to be a part of this company. That's cool. Um, so that's how I got to Keller Williams and how I got to meet you ladies on my journey as I started KW. Sandra, were you at, uh, were you looking for a job or were you becoming an agent? What were you what was your what were you doing there in the first place? So I was actually working for a company that sells and services the equipment that records 911 calls that I was driving an hour both ways to go work at. Um, okay. And they told me they were going to sell the company, and they gave me time to go interview. So I set up three interviews on a Friday, came in on a Friday. I applied to the MCA position, actually, um, from Craigslist. Wow. I don't even know if mm. anyone uses Craigslist anymore for job ads, but I did. <laughs> and came in. I met Jenny Sweeney, uh, mm. who was the interim OP and the team leader at the time because she didn't have a team leader yet. Um, and she said, look, you got to take this assessment. I don't know if you're going to pass it. Nobody does. I really like you. I want you to be in the role, but we can't move forward until you take this test. I took the test. I failed it. I was excited because it refreshed me on what I learned in school. I went across the street, looked something up on, um, on my phone just to refresh myself of what I learned in school, came back, and she was like, no, don't take the test yet. Go home and study. I was like, no, I've canceled my other two interviews today. I'm taking the test. And I took it, and I passed it. Um, and so I actually applied to the MCA position, and she said, okay, there's a lot of other interviews that are part of this process, and you're just a candidate. So she handled that part of it, right? <laughs> and yep. I was like, I'm going to work here, so I'm not going to those other interviews. I'm still not licensed, so what I love to tell people when they ask me that, because I get asked that often, um, if I sell real estate, I tell them I have no idea how to write a contract. None. Please don't come ask me a contract question. I will send you to almost everybody else in the building but me. But if you ask me what I've noticed in other people's businesses and learned as I studied people's businesses and what I've helped people execute on, I can tell you the failures and successes of people so that you can learn faster and go faster in your business. That's great. I love that. So how did you, my question is, how did you become, because uh, I know you know Nancy from coaching, right? Are you a, Are you now a coach for CAs? So how did that come about, and what made you even know that you would like some doing something like that? I love that question. So I actually, um, I loved the moment that I realized that an agent came in my office and I had a conversation with them, and they went and did what we talked about, and then three months later, they could take their kids to the Disney trip that they talked to me about taking them on because of something that we discussed. So and I well, think in so that moment, my mind, uh, we got really clear on the simple steps of what it would take for them to hit their goals. Um, so this mm. was actually pre uh, CGI calculator or any of that because I had an opportunity to be a part of the conversation that created that system. 
um, but this was just bringing it down to the simple and holding them accountable to what they said was important to them and then it working, right? Because I came from this background of not valuing myself at all. And so when I actually saw that I could be used in a way to make a clear difference in someone else's life, it triggered something for me. Mm. Um, and so, so in that moment, yeah, in that moment I realized I can be used to make a difference which is a crazy idea for someone who tried to run her entire life off the railroad tracks, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. Um, in that moment, uh, I was super excited about growth and continuing to learn. I've always been someone that learned about whatever I was doing. I love researching things. Um, and um, I got a coach about a year and a half <coughs> into the business. And the moment I got a coach, I decided I want to, wanted to also be one so that I could have a bigger impact like that impact I had in that one conversation. And what I knew is if I can get to the leaders and help spark that thing in me where I realized that could make a difference, that would impact all of their agents. Mm. Sandra, the thing that I love about you saying that, um, and I want to share a quick story on you too. Uh, Well, actually, before I do that, I would love to ask you this question because you are so learning based and you're, Linda and I, we're like learning based junkies. Um, So do you think you were born learning based or do you think that that's something that you developed as you got into adulthood and into your career? I think that, I don't know if anyone's born I think we're all naturally born learning based, right? We learn everything. We're not born talking or walking. Uh, So we we are born learning. And then I think we get to choose at a certain point based on different experiences. I've studied a lot of people's different paths and journeys. Um, So what I think happened for me just based on my experiences, um, I definitely have always been learning based as a human is. And when I started realizing that I wasn't early in adulthood, when I started realizing that I wasn't what someone treated me like, I was Mm -hmm. who God created me to be, then Mm -hmm. I knew I could go learn and do anything like my mom told me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think it just developed over time. I always, I was a straight A student. I skipped half of my senior year and still had straight A's. I was going to fail because of absences. And my mom was like, what are you doing? You know, (laughs) so um, I have always done well in learning and feel like I could I could honestly do anything that I put my mind to. And so could anyone else. And I'm grateful Mm -hmm. to be in an environment that fosters that and to be surrounded by people who are all learning based. And I know that being a part of MAPS coaching and learning from people like Diana Kokoska and being held to a higher standard of executing on what I learn has made a huge impact on who I am as a mom and helping my kids navigate really tough things and who I am as a business partner and who I am as a friend to people, right? I think it's just... It, it's really impacted who I am. And you know what? I have off days. And the great thing is I've studied enough to have the tools to know when I do, which can be a curse, right? <laughs> um, and then I also have studied enough to know what to do in the moment that I realize I'm in one. Yeah. I'm having an off day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great. Um, one of the things that I uh, love about you is – so you coach Nancy, who is our, the CFO of my organizations for many, many years, and she recently got another coach. And so one of the one of our meetings, I said to her, how's it going with your new coach? And she said, I really like them. And I said, good, I'm so glad, and followed quickly by, uh, but they're not Sandra. <laughs> and I said, and so, but here's the thing, here's the point that I want to make. I said, well, what's the biggest difference? And she said, I'm getting the, the practical steps and the answers and the things that I need, um, but I'm not being pushed out of my comfort zone. And she said, Sandra pushed me out of my comfort zone and stretched me. And she said, I hated that at the time. But now that I and now that I look back on it, she said, I loved it. I'm so grateful for that. 
And she shared a story. She said one time she told me that if I was going to be, you know, in leadership and keep learning about leaders and being a leader, I needed to go uh, get in conversation with leaders. And so they they had bold going on at the time. And she said, Sandra said, I want you by the end of the session to have gone up, talked to the bold coach, take a selfie with them and send me the selfie so that I know that you did it. Which, you know, for us, we would be like, oh, fun, let's go take a selfie. For Nancy was like, wanted to puke for a week leading up to it. And she was like, I cannot do this. <laughs> And so she told me that example and she said, and you know what? I did it. And she said, and I love Scott Toombs to this day and he's my friend. And, and she said, and Sandra really pushed me. So I one, I wanted to honor you and t t tell you that story. And two, um, what, what is it that you think what in your, I guess, in your experience in regards to coaching, um, what is it in you or what advice would you give other coaches to really connect with their clients like that and to really truly help them have bigger lives because you helped nancy you pushed her and i mean she her life is so much bigger thank you she she is someone special you know i don't and here i go again right i can hear that narrative in my mind <laughs> um i think that I'm just super grateful for the people that surround me every day that remind me in the moments that I still go back to that I'm not enough that I dealt with from when I was seven years old, that all of us navigate for different reasons in different ways. Um, I'm just grateful for the way that people remind me of all the awesome things about me and don't let me shrink down. And mm. um, I would just say that in any given moment, if someone is off track talking about a task or uh, being busy or being distracted or anything, right, our job as a coach is to remind them of why we got into this relationship together, which is the same as reminding an agent why they got into real estate, mm. right? So these are very, very the market center path as a leader to an agent and the path for me as a coach to a leader is very similar. Mm -hmm. When you pay attention to what is the real purpose of being here and the real purpose for me of being a coach in someone else's life is I intend to leave them better off than I found them mm -hmm. because I choose to, after lots of not doing it in my life, I choose to surround myself and be intentional about connecting with and having time with people that help me be better because God choose to save me and help me be used in people's lives. And you have to take that responsibility seriously. If the past year and a half hasn't taught us anything, it's reminded us another time for many of us you know, tons of times in our lives have we been reminded that we're not promised tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if we don't take every conversation we have an opportunity to have with the next person seriously, then why are we here? Mm -hmm. Like, what is our real purpose here if we're not looking at the person in front, of, in front of us, realizing the gift that they are and helping them realize the gift that they are and not letting them shrink down? Right? Yeah, I love that. That, that and you know, that is the purpose. I think of about with my own coach, um, you know, uh, and, and I think what you're doing, Sandra, is you're you're talking when you talk about what's the real purpose of being here. It's kind of like what Jimmy always likes to say. I, we're just going to talk about the elephant in the room, you know, rather than skirt all around, whatever. Let's just get right to the core, to the point that really yes. is going to make the biggest difference. And I noticed that with my own coach, you know, I'll go into my call most weeks going, I have no idea what we're going to talk about, there isn't a thing, you know, that could work or help or whatever. And I swear every time I get off that call and I think, thank God for Terry, because she brings yeah, it awesome. right back to something I told her that I wanted to accomplish or she'll ask me a question and I'm like, we're off to the races. So I think that's what a good coach does is you know, we're on to so many other things that they bring us back to what we yeah. said was important to us in the first place. Um, the question that just popped up when you were talking that I really love to ask people when they get in their stuff, because I'm an expert at getting in mine so I can recognize it quickly, is what are you up to in life? Like, okay, all the things you just said, all the problems, all the circumstances, all the detail, 
what are you up to with this life that you have today? And when they get clear or are reminded of what they told me they're up to in life, the rest of the details fall into place. They know what mm -hmm. the next step is. Every single person on this earth was put here possessing everything they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. We just are That's gifted true. with people that we get to surround ourselves with to remind us of what we're up to here. And mm -hmm. when we're clear on yeah. that, the next step is clear. So true. I love yeah. that. And um, um, I want to ask one question, and then I want to switch gears and talk about what okay. you and I talked about when we did the South Africa mega camp um, uh, breakout session recently. But uh, do you think, I don't know if you've listened to the podcast where Dana and I talk about simplifiers and multipliers, but are yes. you, do you think you're a simplifier or a multiplier? Um, definitely a multiplier. <laughs> so, so your first thought on something is how do I take it out to the world or how do I make this simpler? How do I take it out to the world and then what's the next action for that to happen? Mm. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so it's interesting that you asked me that because I just got um, a new journal about a week and a half ago. And in the front of it, it asks what the top three goals are that you have in the next year. And my number one goal that I wrote down, and you'll, because I am a coach and because you have coaches, you'll know why I'm sharing this on here. Um, the number one thing I wrote down is I will be an international trainer and coach by December 31st of 2022. Um, and so that is the answer to your question, right? My goal is how do I go help the most amount of people possible understand the responsibility they have and how equipped they are to go make a difference in the lives of everyone in their community. Awesome. Love that. And speaking of that, you and I had a connection. We did the South Africa mega camp recently uh, and yes. uh, had the opportunity to connect there. And in there, we discovered that we both have a love for the Salvation Army. So kind of tell us, if you will, kind of how your love spark happened with Salvation Army. And then um, I made a note when we were talking before the podcast started, because I want to talk a little bit about um, even, even the, I don't think, what I don't want people to feel bad about, because I always think about what, what are the questions, what are the things nobody's really saying? And I do this a lot in religion, and I have one girlfriend that we run, and so we can say things to each other that no one would say out loud to anybody else. Like, I, I don't know <laughs> if I've told this on the before, but her and I have probably asked to be saved about 455 times, you know, and <laughs> matter of fact, I just texted her recently with a sermon that our pastor said, and I said, okay, I think we're good. But, um, but it's funny because nobody would say that out loud, right? But I would like to say the things out loud that I think people are thinking and they feel bad about thinking. So when I think about charity and giving, you know, it's so funny. And you talked about before we started the podcast about you ask people what makes you cry. And I remember for years, our Keller Williams office did this um, kids thing. And we would go to this community center and we would hand out presents and do things. And I have to be honest with you, I couldn't get through it. I was so emotional and it would tear me up so much. I would leave and then I would feel horrible because I would think, Linda, you of all people were one of those children. Why can you not, why can you not handle this? So that's one thing. And then the second thing is I didn't ever really feel a passion. I mean, I've been doing business and making a lot of money for a long time. And yes, I'd give my money to the church and do certain things like that. But I'd hear people talk about something that I, they felt like they were on fire for. And I would feel bad because I didn't seem to have that same drive to go dedicate all my time to something or do whatever. And I realized that these things actually have a time and a place. So I, you know, again, anytime we compare, we, we do horrible things. I would compare you know, someone else that all they want to do is dedicate their life to a nonprofit to mine who felt like a, you know, a, a sluffer because I wasn't doing that or, and I didn't even have a passion to do that. But it's like one day when the timing was right, I woke up and I realized I really want to give the Salvation Army a million dollars or more. I mean, that's just the baseline that I want to do. And it's like a fire got sparked in me, but it couldn't get sparked even until it was t the timing was right. So let's talk about how you and I got on that topic and kind of how your love for Salvation Army kind of came along uh, for you. I love that. And you're not, maybe you will believe this, 
you just said something else that I'll talk about that I wasn't even going to share today. That is another connection that you and I have <laughs> around what you just said. So that's awesome. Um, so when I was little and my mom was working four jobs and sometimes we didn't have power, um, we would just sit around and um, use candlelight and I would make up skits with my sisters and um, – and we would perform them for my mom because we couldn't turn on the TV or the lights. So we had to, you know, have <laughs> something to do, which is some, they're some of my fondest memories with my sisters, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it was such special time that we wouldn't have had if the power was working. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm grateful for that. Um, and one of the places that we would go to in the months that she could not, we lived in an older home. It was built in the... 1900s the bathroom used to be an outhouse so there was actually one little tiny bathroom with these huge bedrooms um in this old historic home that we lived in that she purchased by the way which is amazing that she was able to do that um however um it was not very energy efficient at all <laughs> so uh we would use kerosene heat and um and the power bill when we did use the power to do anything was enormous and so with her, you know, waiting tables and working at convenience stores and everything she was doing, she didn't always have the funds to pay the bills because there were quite a lot for a single mom. And um, so we would go to this, we would walk sometimes to the Salvation Army for a couple months and we would go in and, you know, they would have clothes there and they would also be able to help us with um, paying our bills. So... We would go get in line, and we would all be there with her, and, be, you know, we didn't know better. We were like, oh, this is cool. We get to hang out with other people, and they're super nice. Um, and some of them were, were, you know, not doing well um, at the moment. So we thought, what's wrong with that guy? Because we're little and don't know, right? So people <laughs> who are maybe having, battling some kind of, you know, addictions or mental challenges that we didn't know when we were little, um, it was awesome just to have the opportunity to go there and love on people. When we were there getting help ourselves, we just didn't even know what that meant until later, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we were in line, and they would actually um, write a check for the power so that we could have power again. Um, and they did have clothes there because I would wear, like, the same outfit, like, twice a week because there weren't a lot of clothes that fit me because I'm the oldest, so I don't get hand-me-downs. <laughs> you start the chain of hand-me-downs. That's right. That's right, yeah. You start the chain of hand-me-downs. So... Um, I'm just super grateful. There were so many other um, things and people and organizations that played a huge role at that time in our lives when I was little um, that are near and dear to my heart, and the Salvation Army is certainly one of them. That's awesome. Um, and, yes, it's, it's just amazing. They have a food pantry here at the one here, and so uh, my 41-year-old cousin – uh, just randomly passed with no previous health issues um, about a month and a half ago. And um, Sean, my significant other, was able to post on our um, Market Center Facebook group that we were doing food donations for the Salvation Army. And my whole, like, car and I, we filled the whole room in, like, two days <laughs> because cool. she would always give food there, too, for different reasons for her. Um, and so we were able to, like, continue with what she was already going to be doing that week in a much bigger scale to honor her. So there's a lot of um, things that are special for me about the Salvation Army and what they do. Yes. So what do you think, what do you think when people can find something they're connected to that, that like you, the, the question you like to ask people uh, is, what, what is that question you like to ask? What makes you cry? Why do you ask yes. that? So, um you know, I heard it in a class one time from Dick Dillingham, who's one of the most amazing instructors in our company. Um, and yeah. he was saying it when you're helping people think about what's important to them. There's two reasons mm -hmm. I ask it. One, many times people don't realize and have never been in a career previously where they can choose how much income they make. And in real estate, you can. So it's an effort to help them understand that they can actually financially make a difference in something if they choose to now, where they may have had a set income if they were in a, in a different industry in the past, right? Um, and so I love to ask people, what makes you cry? 
and then they don't know what I'm saying usually at first. I say, no, what I mean is when you hear something on the news or hear someone talk about it or you've had a family member that suffered with a specific thing and it really touched your heart and you really felt the urge in the moment to do something about it, but you couldn't do any more than pray or, you know, go serve them with your time and you really wanted to do more, now you can. Mm -hmm. And so I I want you to write that thing down. And now you can choose exactly what you're going to do about it, how much of an impact you're going to have, how many people you're going to help, and you can start doing that today. I love that. I love that. And you know what? I'm adding that question. One of my favorite things Mm -hmm. to do is a a process that we call career visioning um, and put do a, a a behavioral assessment so that people can get more clarity about, you know, what their purpose is in this life and what they should be doing. And one of my favorite questions is the future self, and that's making them spend some time thinking about, you know, what's important to them, what would they need to accomplish, you know, in the next three to five years to feel amazing about it. And I'm going to ask this question, but I have one question for you. When you ask this question for guys, what happens? (laughs) Good question. What happens when you ask a man this question? Uh, They usually look at me like I have five eyes (laughs) at first. (laughs) <laughs> Did you expect a different answer? No, I didn't. And no, the reason I ask that is because, no, the reason I ask you that is because when we do the when I do when I bring people into our strategy room and I put them through this process and I do the future self, nine times out of ten, men included, there's some tears that happen a little bit. And I love yeah. it because I think that we don't spend enough time getting connected to what emotionally moves us. Remember, people move on emotion and justify with logic, but we don't connect to that emotion enough or or remind ourselves of what emotion yes. means to yes. us. So I love that question. I'm, I'm adding that question. Man, female, I don't care. I'm gonna that's my love new it. question. I love it. The thing I love about that though, you guys, is so many people, a lot of the times we talk about our big why. What's your big why? What's your big why? And people have no freaking clue. I mean, you know, if, and, yes. and sometimes it's like, oh, I'm just going to pay for my kid to go to college or my big why is, you know, to pay off my credit card debt. And sometimes I think that they're not even thinking big enough when they're thinking about their big why. And so I love this question and I wrote that down, Sandra, because even if you were going to ask me what makes you cry, I would be like, oh, I'm not really a crier. <laughs> I mean, my first thought, but then to go further and say, okay, but when you're thinking about what's, what those things that are really important to you, that really like tug on your heartstrings, that's a totally different way of thinking about it and could connect somebody to their big why if they have no clue, you know, what their big why is, or if they struggle with thinking that it might even not be big enough. I love, I just think this is so great. I love that. Absolutely. I've had that experience plenty of times. Well, I just think about in my processes when I've taken through people through this process and I've taken so many top agents and agents through this process, I think what I also discover is uh, what's their grit, um, what is motivating them to succeed. A lot of times this will be the key connection. I'm going to think about this even more moving forward, but I think a key connection is if we can, if they can tap into this, this is also what's going to make them have grit to whatever they need to to have to accomplish what they need to accomplish. Uh, It's going to be their motivation for why they get up and do what they do. I love this. This is, this is powerful. As we wrap up, what would be a final thought or some uh, idea you'd want to share with everyone? And and Dana, if you have a final question, I'll I'll let it end with you and uh, Sandra. I would just say that, you know, as we're approaching the time of year where we um, do vision board and we do business planning and we do life planning, Don't forget that the time to do that is by the end of September so that if you are in real estate, that you have plenty of time to start the year off strong. And I would challenge you to do it in two ways this time. Instead of just having one general vision of what you intend to have at the end of the year, why don't you have two pieces? Why don't you have it in living life, so all of the things you intend to have for your family, and also in the ways you're going to give life? So I would just challenge you to have two vision boards for every person listening. What are the ways you're going to give life? And so that would be the things that pull at your heartstrings. How are you going to contribute to those with your time and your resources? That would be the ways that you're going to go teach or coach or share your story. 
I want you to think about what you're up to in this life, and I encourage every person to do both of those things when you plan for next year, and then I'd love for you to come back and tell me what the impact of that is for you. Awesome. How, do, how do they reach you? So my email address is Sandra, S-A-U-N-D-R-A at kw.com. I'm not, I'm not even going to ask my question because I think we should end on that because that was really good. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Sandra, thank you so much. Such, such nuggets in here. And I just want to uh, challenge each and every one of you listening. Uh, if you have not hit subscribe, please do. And then also, if you can think of anyone that would benefit from the conversations that you're hearing on everything in life and real estate, that you'd pass that along. And don't forget, if you have an opportunity, a challenge, or a question, or you'd just like to come on the podcast and get personal coaching around your life or your business from Dana and I, just reach out to us at info at everything, life, and real estate. And Dana, uh, Sandra, so nice to connect with you again. And Dana, I'll see you next week. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.